Hey, what's up guys? I thought today we would start talking about the robot project that I mentioned in a previous video. So, here's the stuff that I got and let's go over it. You can see it comes with two wheels and they're keyed to fit on the shafts of the motor. This is the frame, this is the rear of the frame, this is the front of the frame. A four AA battery pack. Two gear driven motors. I've already soldered the wires to them. So you can see how the motors and the wheels fit together oh fantastic fucking Chinese engineering that uh, might take a little bit of knifer ah I don't know goddamn Chinese bastards uh, okay this is a freewheeling caster for the rear this is the Chinglish instructions which are fantastic thank you for purchasing the ZK-2 smart car this car is the high price of car chassis built specifically for robot entry car motor comma power supply system can support 3 volts to 12 volts and with the speed of mouth comma rudder mouth comma tracing comma barrier fixed position semicolon convenient for expanding the test U period collect the product after should be the first time reference configuration list check element is complete right on so also included is just you know some mounting hardware and um, a couple of encoder wheels. So, if we mount our motor, let me show you how the motors go on here. Have these little mounting tabs and you drop one in there and you hope you're lucky and clamp one out here okay and then you flip this over and your motor mounts like this so you see you've got that little slot right there by my thumb I'm just going to drop these mounts and pretend. So what we can do, and look at that, that actually fits. So it's the wheels that are shit, not the motor. We can put our encoder there and we can actually track the speed. So that's pretty nice. Uh, it comes with a power switch. some standoffs and some metric hardware so my intent on building this kit is to start with something simple an obstacle avoiding robot and uh, I'll show you what I've got planned for that here just as soon as I collect all this hardware that I wish I hadn't dumped out now. So if you haven't seen the video on forward and reverse control of a DC motor, there's a link down below and you should probably check it out because that's going to be really important in moving our car around. All right, so the first 
sense that we're going to give this thing is the ability to look around. And we're going to do that with these. I don't want to focus, does it? Come on, focus. Whatever. Uh, we're going to do it with these HCSR04 ultrasonic sensors. And what I've done here is I've just put together a little test rig with an OLED screen that will read out the distance for us. Now you can see that's showing zero inches because it has a maximum distance. But as I bring my phone closer to the sensor, you can see that the distance is changing. So, what we can do with this is mount this, not exactly like this, but we mount this sensor to the front of a car, the robot car. I'm just calling it the car, or let's call it the robot. And as it comes in and notices a wall, for instance. Now, if you can see the screen there, that says 1.97 inches. Well, now it says 2.36. So we'll set a threshold and say when the robot gets closer than four inches, stop. Then we'll have it rotate either left or right, clockwise or counterclockwise, and move forward again until it reaches another obstacle. So now we need to discuss how we're going to power it and the brain of it. Now for our project here, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, the Arduino Mega. And for the forward and reverse control, I'm going to use a motor shield. This was the one available from Seed Studio. And I definitely want you to read this here. This is fantastic. Right there under attention. Best to keep the shield away from fire. You think? So there's our Mega. And <laughs> here's the shield. Now I've already played with this a little bit, so I can tell you a little bit about it. Now this shield is able to drive two motors. And let's see if I can bring this close enough for you to read that. They are labeled out one, out two, out three, out four. And then you have your external power, which you need to flip over and pull back so that you can see which one is VN and which one is ground. Now this shield uses pins eight through 13. So you're not gonna be able to use them for anything else, which is one of the reasons that I'm picking the Mega for this. Now, you can see it where the J, or not J tag, but the ISP header fits on there. We can just plug her in like this. Fits very nicely. And it passes through the pins. Although eight through 13 are gone, but we still have digital one through seven there. And then we have all of our extra pins that the uh, Mega gives us. It's 
So now, to hook this thing up, we just put our wires in. And it really doesn't matter which way you put them in, but you do want to put them in the same way for both of your motors. So that's three and four. So I started with the red wire. So we'll do the same thing for this motor. Making sure that the red wire is in the first position and the black wire is in the second position. Now let's let's zoom in on this shield here a little bit. This jumper here is to allow it to get external power. Then we have a reset button here. We have status LEDs for this motor on this side and status LEDs for that motor over there on that side. I have been unable to get this to work with the external power and I can't figure out why. But I can make it work with the internal power. So that's what we're going to do here for this little demonstration. Bring this over so we can see everything that's going on here. I'm going to plug in the uh, USB for the Mega. Now it runs them in one direction for five seconds, and then it runs them in the other direction for five seconds. And, uh, here, I'll just go give you a quick look at this code right now. All right, here is the sample code for driving these motors. And I found it on Instructables by a guy named, I think it was Sisson. Let me look here, hold on. Sisfrog. His name was Sisfrog. So, let's go and just look through this real quick. Pin 9, sets enable and speed outputs for motor 1. Pin 10, does the same thing for motor 2. Pin 8, controls the state of output 1, output 2. So these are for motor 1. So this will be one direction. This will be the other direction. It will either be high or low. Then pin 12 and pin 13 do the same for motor 2. Whether it's high or low will be forward or backward. Now we have our variables. Left motor forward. See it's telling it pin 8. Left motor backward, pin 11, see how that works. Right motor forward, right motor backward, left motor speed is on pin 9, right motor speed is on pin 10. Then we have a delay timer, and we have a run timer, so it'll do these things for 5 seconds at a time. And then we have uh, some speeds, our slow speed, our fast speed. Now, like I said, this is just a sample sketch that I'm using just to figure out how this shield works. We're going to get more in-depth into the programming once I actually start writing the programming for it. So we just turn all of our pins to output. And then in our main loop, we go forward. We wait. We stop wait and we go backward now here in these uh, functions here's go forward 
So we say analog right left motor speed will be fast, right motor speed will be fast. Now we're just setting the speed there, we're not activating them. Then we drive them both low to stop whatever position they were both in. Then we drive them high to activate our loop. Same thing for go backward and stop. The function stop just drives them both low so they both stop. Alright, let's take a look at this little sample sketch in action. Alright, like I said there, it, um, I'm just getting started with this shield so I don't have a lot of information about it. But uh, once I do, we'll get more in depth into the programming. Now, as it's running, you can see the LEDs changing. indicating directions and whatnot. So that's where we are so far with the robot project. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a like. Feel free to comment. Uh, share it with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what the heck are you waiting for? See you in the next part.